being said about the way I looked. No one wants to tell their teachers like <laughs> ain't gonna happen, sweetie. It was a mixture of mental and emotional and psychological bullying. I commend people who successfully make it through bullying and become a boss. No matter what your gender, no matter what position you are in life, no matter whether you're a CEO, or you're a manager or any other store, it doesn't matter what you do. The fact that you have a simple career, you're working, you're earning your money, you are a boss. You've survived something that is actually supposed to do you some long-term damage and actually hasn't. welcome back to my youtube channel so bit of a heavy one um i thought let me just keep this um as raw as possible and just have a nice conversation with you guys um obviously if it's not obvious in the title um today's video is about bullying i received so many comments and dms on my last video um if you guys have not seen it, go check it out. It was reading assumptions about me, um, where I briefly mentioned in the video that I was never the popular girl in school. I was actually someone that was quite badly bullied for 90% of my childhood. Um, and a lot of people really wanted me to kind of talk about it and ways to move through it and move forward with it and ways I dealt with it. So I figured in this video, what I would do is separate the bullying I experienced as a child and tell you guys that story and how I coped with that and the bullying I've dealt with as an adult through cyberbullying and online bullying and hate comments and how I've dealt with that and I just feel like if I like compartmentalize it it will just be like a lot easier to deal with and just have it in like two separate sections um and it, yeah it will make it easier for anyone to come back and if they want to read about the cyberbullying they can just go to the second half of the video if they want to read or talk should i say about um bullying as a child or going through it in school college anything like that in your workplace that'll be the first half of the video so yeah um i don't really know like where the best place is to start but i'm gonna start by talking to you guys about my experience um and i don't want this to be like a pity me situation i actually want this to be very empowering and i want to talk about the things i learned from it and progressed and how it made me the strong person i am today and i want it to be positive so we're just gonna have a few minutes of sadness and then we're gonna bring it right back up i experienced bullying from primary school and the person that bullied me in primary school then followed me to my secondary school when i say followed me i don't mean she literally purposely went to the same secondary school as me it was more that she just happened to get into that school so my secondary school which i've mentioned before was an all-girls grammar school um thousands of people applied and they only take the top 250 so the chances of her getting in and me getting in were not exactly the highest <laughs> um but they were possible um it was in essex so a lot of people that were not in essex or lived within the catchment area or somewhat locally um couldn't apply for it because obviously transport and stuff like that was just too far and i think if i remember correctly i was a bit young i was 10 when i applied like literally 10 11 years old when i first started so i think i'm i'm gonna double check with my mum. but i believe that it was only if you lived within a certain radius um, or a certain catchment area that you could actually even apply or go to the school so of course she applied and yeah we ended up at the same secondary school so that's what I mean when I say she followed me there it was a mixture of m mental and emotional and psychological bullying more so than physically um I know that there are girls out there that can be quite um aggressive physically um i never really dealt with the i'm like getting fidgety sorry i never really dealt with the physical side of bullying thankfully i you know i experienced the odd pushing here and there 
like I was definitely pushed over in the playground and definitely like shoved against a wall and stuff like that but I never really had like a full-on physical attack for me it was more so I not even I felt like what she done was isolate me from everyone so it would be you know if there was like a group of us playing it would be a case of don't play with her or I would be the person that was it in the playground and they would all just disappear and go inside and I'd be by myself like looking or it would be a case of why does your hair look like that um it would be a case of why are you so short because I'm quite a tiny person and especially as a young child like I was so small I can't even put it into words like I was so short it was a joke so a lot of it was was more stuff like that or it was like telling me that I was stupid and wasn't going to succeed in my classes um telling the boy that I fancied when I was in primary school that I fancied him so everyone laughed at me in the playground you know walking past and accidentally dropping you know something on my skirt so then I had a stay in and then telling everyone to laugh at me telling me that I need to stay in a classroom late and saying you know one of the teachers want to see me so that I'm the last one down to assembly so when I walk in everyone stares at me and then I'm just embarrassed I was told repeatedly that I was unattractive um and can I just say like I know I feel like a lot of people are going to ask if it had anything to do with race or my skin tone um no she was black and we were actually a very similar skin tone it's just that I was just really really small and tiny and frail and she was just a lot taller than me now I'm I'm five foot four and I think if I remember correctly she's probably roughly about five nine ish um, so she's a beautiful height and I was just like the small skinny one and I also you know as much as I say it wasn't about race my dad's side of family are um, of Indian descent so there was a lot of you don't belong here you don't belong here you don't belong here but it always came from the same person don't really know how deep to go with this video um, I ended up in the hospital a few times because my anxiety levels were through the roof when I would go to school and be around her and I'll never forget being like seven or eight and um oh god I've never actually um like sat on camera and spoken about this I remember being seven or eight and her walking in the room and I like quite literally wet myself because I was so shit scared of her telling me how crap I was at something or telling me like how I didn't um, belong somewhere or I don't know I just emotionally and mentally and psychologically like it took a toll on me I used to have to embarrassingly tell my teachers what had happened and obviously the last explanation I had was it was never going to be that I was being bullied no one wants to tell their teachers like yeah no one no one wants to do that so I kept it to myself my mum used to think something was like wrong with me why it would happen you know it wasn't like it was every day but it, it was in particular moments and especially when things like pee would come up because I'd just be so scared of like the competition or being hit with a netball or shoved flat on my face or like if I went to the toilet and it was just like me, her and like two other people in there like being made fun of like it was just it was just not nice. I still think to this day that no other pupils at the school knew what happened. Here we are now at secondary school. So now I'm like 10, 11 years old, it's year seven, it's like the best thing ever. And the difference between primary school versus this is that this time she had like a little, a little crew. There were a lot of things said about the way I looked the way I styled my hair because my mum was all about me having natural hair 
she didn't like me putting heat on it she'd let me wear it like blow dried out at most but if not it was always like braided either really long or braided back like a little boy <laughs> um which now i'm so grateful for but at the time i obviously hated it don't want to delve too deep into it because i actually don't want to get emotional but um yeah i've been through it and my way of coping with it at the time and how it was stopped for me at the time was I do not encourage this and condone this behaviour, but this is how I dealt with that at the time. And now looking back, I wish I had like been told to deal with it in another way. Um, but how I dealt with it at the time was she was walking along to class one day and she said something to me. And to this very day, I don't remember what it was because it was so just like, you know, when you see in movies when things go like quiet and the surrounding sounds just blur. I felt like she said what she said and everything blurred and I just was filled with rage. I just saw red, shoved her really hard against the wall. I had my hands like by her neck and I was like, I'm, I'm not doing this with you anymore. In my head, I thought I'm going to go to jail. Like I've just killed someone. How dramatic. And it's just not what I wanted to do. And I remember there was just a moment of us like staring at each other um, and it stopped ready to rumble to say the least that was the way i dealt with it in the moment and that was not the best way to deal with it i think for me there are now that i've learned and educated myself and spoken up there are multiple ways to deal with things one of the best ways is counseling i feel like people hear the word counseling or a therapist and they scream and they run and they're like oh my god i can never be the person that has a counselor that's so embarrassing um you can and i cannot express to you how much of a relief it is and how good it feels to be able to talk to someone that has no emotional attachment to you and can help you rationalize your thoughts and get your emotions in line obviously emotion can sometimes get the better of us when dealing with certain situations and sometimes the best way to do that is either like logically or rationally or emotionally and merging them together and i feel like when you have counseling sessions it really helps you do that so counseling for me has always been like one of the best things i've ever done another thing is which i will write on the screen if i don't write them on the screen now then i've listed them in the description box but there are a lot of websites and a lot of people to call now I feel like when I say that, anyone that is watching this that has been through bullying is probably sat there or is going through it. It's probably sat there and thinking, I'm not calling anyone. I cannot stress enough how important it is to talk to someone. The last thing people want to do is talk to their parents and run to their parents because it makes you feel weak. It makes you feel like, you know, oh, my mum didn't raise someone that strong, whether you're male or female. It makes you feel weak and the reality is is the strength that you actually have to even put up with it on a daily basis and still wake up in the morning and get ready and go back to that same environment just to potentially do it again you're stronger than the bully and that's that's the actual reality of it um call the numbers go to the websites have the meetings um it's important like i cannot stress enough how important it actually is I would also suggest talking to your friends about it. I feel like the generation that I grew up in when I was in school, that just wasn't a thing. Like you didn't talk, it just, you kept it inside. Talk to your group of friends or talk to one of your friends, talk to your brother and your sister, your cousins, your aunties, your uncles, your parents, your grandparents, tell someone. And it's so, so hard. And it doesn't even mean that you need to sit there and be like, I am being bullied and da, da 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 But even if you sit there and you just cry, like I'm a very, very big believer in allowing yourself to feel the emotions. If you are hurt and you are broken and you are upset and you are being bullied, cry. Don't think that crying is a sign of weakness. Cry, work through those emotions. And I'm getting emotional. <laughs> okay. We're done with the crying. Talk about this obviously hits um, a little bit close to home. Um, and I don't want to be just like upset. Um, but I, yeah, I can't express like how important it is to talk to anyone and work through your emotion. You cry, you cry. I am a firm believer in be emotional for 24 hours and then tomorrow you've got to wake up and be a gangster. <laughs> um, and what I mean by that is, um, like be emotional let yourself cry let yourself be hurt scream into a pillow 
punch a pillow don't punch a wall because you know we don't need broken bones on top of being emotionally upset but you know punch a pillow do whatever it is you need to do to express the emotion and then the next day you wake up you take a deep breath in and you go again um it's easier said than done um but the the strength and the power and the positive energy that you radiate when you stand up with your shoulders back and your head high and looking a bully directly in the face after they made you break down the night before is just the most beautiful feeling kill them with kindness no matter how negative they are to you use positive unemotional language to them you know your dress looks nice today if they've said you look like crap yours looks nice it's it's hard it's um it's not easy you know if they if they come at you instead of shouting back and being like you're upsetting me or shouting at me i don't really appreciate your tone of voice you know it's about letting them know that okay you're, you're trying to undermine me ain't gonna happen sweetie ain't gonna happen and it kind of is the same when it comes to online now moving on to online bullying which a lot of people don't feel like it's online like there's a lot of people out there that feel like oh because you have a platform you need to understand that this comes with it a hundred percent the minute you open yourself up to having any type of online platform there is an understanding that it can come with some hate some bullying some negative comments that does not mean however you need to sit there and accept it like sorry but no you can have your opinion put me in your group chat talk about me to whoever you want but there is no need for you to come online and talk hatred and negativity and just damn right rudeness towards me when you don't even know me especially when there's a group of people that feel like they can cancel or tear down any other person for me keep your opinions to yourself because nobody asked nobody asked you for me the best way i dealt with hate especially since coming off of the show you know i get a lot of people saying to me you know oh, i thought you were like this because of the way the show edited me to be i know i'm not and i will show you that i'm not i will show you that i have a kind heart and granted there are people that don't like me there are people that do it doesn't really bother me but it's about knowing yourself and knowing what your boundaries and your limits are you know, I, I blocked particular words. So no matter how much hate you try and give to me, it will never, ever hit my radar. I block people in a heartbeat, like <laughs> block a Facebook, block a Instagram, block a this, block a telefonata. Everything gets blocked, block, 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 block. You're getting blocked. My favorite thing to do now is to restrict them. So they are unaware that they have been blocked or that people can't see their comments. So they can leave as much hate as they want. And especially on Instagram, it allows me to see the comment personally and approve it. Or I can say it's unapproved and delete and block them. Or I can just say it's unapproved and leave it there. They can still see it on their page, but they're the only ones that can see it. And there is nothing that jars an online bully more than when they do not have access to someone who is right in their face. So not just that they've been blocked, but that, hey, I'm commenting and no one's responding. No one's jumping on the bandwagon of hate. I haven't come back and told you, you know, let's fight, let's argue. I haven't come back and told you it's hurt me, but you actually think you're upsetting me because you're the only one that can see your comment. Like, I think it is brilliant. And even then again, there are also charities and platforms online that you can use and communicate with the numbers you can call. Again, I will write that all down for you guys if the online bullying is getting too much. I think for me, there is safety and communication i want to create a safe space on this video in particular i would love for people to comment below whether they've been bullied are being bullied are scared of potentially being bullied don't know how to deal with the bully don't know how to move on from experiencing bullying comment below like i want to i want to create a safe environment for people to comment and spread love any negativity you will get blocked and reported simple period like you will get blocked and reported let me just tell you honey <laughs> blocked and reported i hope i have not rambled on for too long i hope i have given some other ways if anyone has any other examples of how to deal with it and how to move on with it um please 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 comment below and another thing i want to make sure i end on is that if you are experiencing bullying it is not your fault 
like I cannot express how much it is not your fault and your problem that is the problem of the bully and that is a self-esteem and self-confidence and self-hatred issue that they need to deal with as to why they're exuding such negative energy onto you but don't let anybody dim your shine ever do not let anybody make you feel like if they walk into a room you are not supposed to be there and you do not belong there you belong there that's why you're there the universe and god work in a mysterious way <laughs> they work in a mysterious way and you are exactly where you are supposed to be don't let anyone make you feel like you're not don't let anyone make you feel like you are less worthy ever you are not alone in the situation and although the situation and bullies create an environment for you to feel alone you're not and you never will be let me just make that explicitly clear i don't want to be too negative i already shed a tear <laughs> but i love you guys so so much and i'm so grateful and blessed to be able to have a platform that allows me to talk on so many intimate topics in so many intimate ways and although youtube limits the reach of them every time i do them Ta -ta. Um, I'm glad to be able to talk to the few amount of you that I am um, and I'm grateful that some of you even want to hear my opinion and how I dealt with them and how I overcame them just never forget that you're a boss you are doing so well and you are so strong and you are striving and you are thriving hunty striving and thriving <laughs> and you always will so I'm sending everyone so much love and positivity. I hope this video wasn't too down and please can everyone below make sure it's a safe space and a safe environment for everyone that is part of this little gang. I like it. I like a little army. A small one. A small army but an army nevertheless. I love you guys and I will see you in my next video.